Thank you very much. <clears throat> and for us Native people, prayer is such, an, is such an important component. Because prayer not only takes you into another level of consciousness, but it's also a daily reformation. A reformation of exactly how inter interconnected and interdependent with everything and everyone in this world. And all our prayers are all for thanksgiving. Today we ask for the strength and the wisdom to put all our voices together to make sure that each and every one of us will put our efforts forward to live out the responsibility that has been given to us by the Creator and to use those gifts that we have been given to help those, to, to help those who are in need. And we thank the Creator for giving us such a wonderful day to, to voice our concerns for, for, the, for the something that is a source of life for everyone. Thank you very much and well on you. Well on you, thank you. And Albert will have some uh, comments to make uh, shortly. Um, with that, I will ask Albert Marshall to uh, once again come up and to, uh, to uh, speak uh, as an elder representative from the uh, community of Unamaki or Cape Breton. Thank you very much. I'm indeed honored to be part and parcel of oh. Thank you very much. I'm really honored to be very much part and parcel of adding our voice to something that needs to be heard and that should resonate right across the province and across this country. I am a Mi'kmaq person from Eskizoni, and in our cultures, <coughs> excuse me, we have been led to believe that one can and should sustain themselves without compromising, first of all, the ecological integrity of the area. And most importantly, in, 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 in the course of our sustaining ourselves, we also have to look into the future, the seven generations, for example. So I have been honored to be a designated voice for the elders of Cape Breton. We are asking you to ask yourself, why, what is the forest? What's the forest for? And from our understanding, forest, <coughs> as is and always was, a source of life. It has provided all our needs, our dwelling needs, our food, our clothing, our medicines, and our spiritual needs. And this is something I believe that we should, on a daily basis, remind ourselves that our natural world is not an object, it's a subject. And it needs the same kind of an affection and consideration like every other living thing. We cannot allow the government or whoever to keep extracting whatever they are extracting from, 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 from her. And not, con and, not, and not consider the ecological, what the ecological repercussions will be, and most importantly, look into the next seven generations of what our next, what our future generations will, will will have in terms of sustaining themselves. Because in our language, we have words <coughs> like "nedukuli." Nedukuli not only implies you, you can and you should sustain yourself, but as I said before, you have to be very mindful that in your in, in so doing. You have to be very, very careful of leaving something for the future. And most importantly, that you don't compromise the ecological integrity of, of the area. In our area, we have been using the, uh, a phrase, Kuwaisin. 
So what I see, and I think it's a very powerful metaphor or tool, because it kind of forces us to look into the past and see some of the decisions that we made in the past maybe weren't, weren't as, as effective or positive. And we take those lessons to the, to the moment or to the present to ensure that as we are moving forward together, these mistakes will never repeat themselves. To why seeing off, of course, also takes you into, into this consciousness in which you are constantly asking questions. You're looking at everything from another perspective, not necessarily from a negative point of view, but rather as to what we can learn. And when I look into my two YC, in today's, in today's standards, in today's societies, questions I have to ask myself, and convey those questions hopefully will be asked by everyone. And that is, is the rate of consumption exceeding the carrying capacity of our system? Is the rate of pollution exceeding the cleansing capacity of our system? Is the um, species that are disappearing for First Nations people, when each time when a species disappears, we feel the effects because we have lost one of our relations. But most importantly, we have to look at what are the actual ecological repercussions each and every time these species are, 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 are eliminated or eradicated. So there is, I believe, something in which we can all agree on today. We have our differences. We are representing various groups. But I believe at the end of the day, we should be very comfortable in, 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 in agreeing and saying that this is something that not only affect us immediately, but this results of this proposed biomass extraction will ultimately affect a multi generations to come. And most importantly, I think it's going to cause such a havoc on creating imbalance to our, to our already delicate system. Now, what I do not understand is that every day I hear about climate change, species at risk. And I would like to think that the government, the people that are looking after those gifts that the Creator has given us for our own, for our own benefits, should at, should at least consider are we going to be doing everything in the future to soften our ecological footprints and most importantly also soften our carbon footprints. Instead, indirectly they hire an American company to come and extract and degrade the very essence of our existence. Because without forest, there is no, there is no clean air. Without forest, there is no clean drinking water. Without forest, there is no fertile soil. I was asked not to speak too loud. But anyway, in conclusion, I would like to share with you this, this old Cree proverb. And the old Cree proverb says, until the last fish has been caught, until the last river has been poisoned, and until the last tree has been cut down. We will know then that money cannot be eaten. Thank you very much.